Hello and welcome to episode five of The Outside Ear. My name is Bryson. And hello everybody, I'm Angeline. And today, we're going to be listening to some real heavy metal. Now, we're going to be listening to Judas Priest screaming for vengeance. Do you know anything about Priest at all? Uh, not other than some of the songs that I've heard you listen to. But yeah. as far as like the band itself, not a whole lot. Yeah, because we, we've played a lot of Priest around this house. Mm-hmm. So you've definitely heard quite a few songs before. But for a bit of background information, um, the album we'll be listening to, Scream for Vengeance, was released on July 17th of 1982. And this is actually our first album we'll be talking about that isn't from the 70s. It's our first 80s album we'll be talking about. This is the band's eighth album, and the band members are Rob Halford on vocals. You should recognize that name. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, K.K. Downing on guitar, Glenn Tipton also on guitar, Dave Holland on drums, and then you have Ian Hill on bass. Now, Scream for Vengeance, to me, is where Priest really, like, really started to make it big, kind of. Um, they did have some past success with... Um, a couple of their albums that came before, like British Steel or Hellbent for Leather. But to me, uh, like just the Scream for Vengeance was where Priest really rose up and really became super popular. And yeah, this album is widely considered a classic, one of their best. And I actually want you to show you the album cover and just, um, like, what do you think when you see that? Okay, um... I don't know, it looks like a GoBot or something to me. A what? <laughs> a GoBot. <laughs> One of those Transformers. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, to me, that, to me, this, I mean, most covers from Priest look pretty metal, but I would say that is a pretty metal looking cover. No. Pretty cool. Looks yeah. Like, yeah, it looks like it's on fire or something. It's like a metallic bird. I yeah, mean, flying through the air. That's always, it kind of looks like a, like a Transformer bird. <laughs> yeah, Transformer. That's funny. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the priest has a lot of great artwork, but I guess let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the first couple of tracks. The album starts out with the Hellion, which is technically the first track, but it's just a short little instrumental that leads up to Electric Eye. But uh, what do you think of, well, I guess the Hellion, what do you think of the Hellion? Just a short little instrumental. Yeah, I thought that was interesting how they just like the first 40 seconds or so was this short little instrumental. That was that was cool. Um, I haven't really heard that in any other song yet. And it just sort of just bled into the next song. Yeah. Like, if you weren't really listening, or you wouldn't have known that the next song had started. Mm-hmm. So that was, I like that a lot. And then overall, the Electric Eye, I, I liked the song a lot. It had a really good energy. Um, it kind of gave you this excited feeling of uh, w- with the beat of the song. And you had mentioned how they tend to use the song a lot for an opening act in their concerts. Mm-hmm. I mean, you mentioned that to me. I could see why, because it's, uh, like, it's, like I mentioned, it was kind of a, uh, gets you excited a little bit to, you feel like you want to rock out a little bit. Yeah. And then um, about a third way into the song, there was a the guitar solo, which I thought was really cool. I like that mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, when it comes to the guitars and Priest, uh, this was kind of like, the classic lineup of the band so you have kk downing glenn tipton and usually when they would play live they would like stand side by side and just you know yeah. play with, with next to each other um i guess i'll mention the hellion really quick i think it's just a cool way of opening up the album just a cool instrumental that just lets you know what you're gonna get into you know now as for electric eye um i've heard the song obviously many times but uh, reading to the lyrics for the first time really it kind of gave me like like a 1984 kind of vibes, which I I'm not sure if we mentioned in a past episode, but um, it, it reminds me of like of the book 1984, mm. or it's like surveillance and oh, okay. yeah, and yeah. like stuff like that. And I think the like the little vocal effect they put over Rob's voice kind of helps that too, because I'm not sure if you noticed, but they kind of made him sound a bit more robotic, kind of. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if you noticed that. Um, and so I think that's a cool little correlation, I guess. Um, I guess, yeah, considering the lyrics with the surveillance and you can't keep anything private from this electric guy, whatever that is. But, yeah, I think electric guy is a great opener. There's a great reason why. It's considered a classic, and it's played at live shows. Yeah, I can see how the song would get you pumped up, ready for the next song. Exactly. It's just a fast-paced, just, you know, fun song. Yeah. 
I agree. Track number three, or technically track number three because the Hellion, I guess, counts as a track. Riding on the Wind, it does not waste any time, and right off the bat, just starts with a killer drum fill, but... Yeah, you. Yes. Um, when I was listening to the song, it made me think of back when I was training for the Grand Fondo. I was collecting songs from my playlist. And this would have been a great one. It was just, I could see myself during the, the times where I was training downhill, just having this song blasting into my ear, you know, riding in the wind. It was really cool. Just like the fast pace. Uh, the, once again, like another high energy song. I really liked it a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this has to be one of my favorite riffs of any song in the Priest catalog. Just, it sticks in your head, and that combined with uh, Rob's amazing vocal range just makes it a million times better. Just, yeah, that, that main riff is absolutely just killer. But, I know we're only on the second song, but I want to know your opinion on Rob's voice. Oh, yeah, I I did actually notice that, too. Just the, the sound of his voice being very distinct. Kind of like when we listen to... Uh, Sabbath. Sabbath, yeah, yeah. I said that he had a, a very distinct voice, and then I was listening to to him, and the same thing. He Just like the, the high pitches that he reaches, mm-hmm. it's pretty amazing. Yeah, he holds some pretty long notes in the song, which yeah. is really impressive, but he's essentially like a cornerstone of metal singers of all time, and you can't mistake his voice with anybody else. It's Rob Halford. Nobody yes. can mimic him. It's also amazing after after all these years, he's still at it, he's still singing. That's true. He he's, still sounds great. He's kept himself relevant all these years. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. And yeah, like he's 71 years old and he still sounds great. And I think that's just goddamn impressive. Talent. True <laughs> exactly. talent. Exactly. Yeah. True talent, really. So Riding on the Wind, a phenomenal song and honestly, probably my favorite off the album. Like... I know we aren't that far into it, but uh, just... I like I like both of them so far. Pretty, yeah, a lot. Track number four, Bloodstone. Yes, Bloodstone, and you know it was kind of funny because before we started recording here, I I tried singing like Rob Halford. It didn't turn out very well. I'll, I'll save the, the the listeners from the yeah. screech. <laughs> I don't want anybody to go deaf, so. <laughs> Let's just spare them from that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So this song, he, he slows it down a bit compared to the other ones that we just listened to. And uh, another great song. I mean, he rocks it out just as well as uh, the other fr- songs we just listened to. And then one thing I've noticed so far from what we've listened to, the guitar seems to be highlighted at some point in each song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's, I like it a lot. Yeah, Bloodstone just has another great riff, just like with Riding on the Wind. It just sticks in your head. Like, ban, 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 ban. Like, you can't mistake that with any other song in the Priest catalog. It just sticks in your head from the very first time you hear it. Um, and you just can't not sing Bloodstone alongside Rob when he's singing. Oh, it. no, yeah. You, can't. you just have to sing Bloodstone, you know? Yeah, I was trying, but it wasn't working out for me very well. <laughs> Actually, maybe you shouldn't do it, but. <laughs> One thing I've only like really realized with a lot of these songs is that a lot of a lot of them aren't even like that long, like three to four minutes, which I guess is like your average time for most songs. But even still, like I guess someone like me who's like into like progressive rock, where you get a lot of more long songs, those are those longer songs usually tend to stick in your mind more, and the the like the shorter, smaller tracks usually are the ones you tend to forget. But when it comes to like Priest and other you know metal bands and stuff, they really cram as much as I can into those like three to four minutes, and not in a bad way. Like they really do all they can, and like really put a lot of you know emphasis behind it. You know, mm-hmm. and you know, obviously coming from me who've, who's heard the song multiple times, it's I think it's just a a little interesting thing that I've never really noticed all that much, just the length of these songs. They aren't, like, that long. But a, uh, Bloodstone gets an A-plus for me. Yes, uh, same here. Next is Take These Chains, which I find to be a song that goes a bit unnoticed compared to everything else on the album, but what's your opinion on this one? Yeah, I can see why it goes unnoticed. No, just, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I mean, I just I was comparing it to the other songs. They were, like, you know, rocking, and then... Like, he, it was slowed down even more on this song. Uh, it was okay. 
it was okay. It wasn't a bad song. Like once again, great vocals. Uh, mm -hmm. I like the the guitarist. Once again, had a solo in it, and the chorus. It was a catchy chorus. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, but it was just it was just a good song. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I pretty much agree with what you say. Um, I think it's a you know it's a good song. Um, it's a bit repetitive. I will say that, but I don't think it hinders the song all that much, honestly. Like, sure, it's repetitive, but it's not like to the point where you want it to stop. No. Plus, the repetition comes with the chorus, and, you know, that chorus is very sing alongable. Like, Yeah, because that's what I found myself wanting to just, like, <laughs> belt out the chorus every time it was, he you was know, singing it. Like with Bloodstone, you know, you just sing, ch you know, take yeah. these chains. Yeah. Um, while the song doesn't feature anything too like special instrumentally wise, um, aside from the great guitar solo as always, the chorus is the thing that sets the song apart, I would say, from the others. Mm -hmm. And I think the song, I guess, deserves a bit more credit, I guess. It's, it's just a fun song. Yeah. I mean, it's not too special. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't saying it was not bad. I was just saying compared to the other ones where you felt like rocking out, this one, I didn't get that same feeling. But it was still a good song. And it's not like I would call it like a filler song either. No, no. It has a place on the album. Yeah. It's, it's a good song. It sticks in your mind because of that chorus. And so, yeah, Take These Chains, really catchy and captivating song, I would say. Okay. It just keeps yeah. your attention because of that chorus. I agree. The next song, Pain and Pleasure, slows things down a little. Yeah, I think what really stood out to me in this song was his vocals because it was a little different than the other songs. Um... Like, uh, the range, I guess. It was, like, a little bit lower. Like, you could feel, like, when he would say the word pain, you know? It was just, like, uh... It kind of meant more behind it. Yeah, just, like, the way he, he sung the lyrics. It was, like, you, you could feel... You could feel the, feel the song, you know? like And it made it a little more, uh... Even though it was a slower jam, it was still rocking. Yeah. Um, yeah, the song is a bit slower, but it still has, like, attitude to it. Yeah, that's that's a great way to describe it, the attitude. That's yes, kind of what I was... it has that just signature priest attitude with Rob's vocals once again. Speaking of Rob, yeah, I like how he adds a little raspiness to his voice. Yeah, yeah. And whenever he says pain, you know, that's where you really feel it. Um, and... Yeah, it just gives an emphasis on the chorus, which is pretty... Another catchy chorus uh -huh. by Priest, once again. With all that being said, um, I would probably say this is probably my least favorite song of the album. Yeah, so far, probably me too. Yeah, it's not bad by any means. No. This is a really good song. It's just compared to everything else, I find this one to be... It just has the least amount of things going for it. Like, just the least amount of things to offer. But the best way to describe the song would be just methodical. It's just very samey throughout kind of like with like take these chains but just slower kind of mm -hmm. um once again by no means is it a bad song far from it it's just i guess compared to everything else on the album you know this one just kind of yeah. tends to lack behind a tiny bit but penny pleasure is still a good song that i just find not as interesting but yeah, i mean there was something a little different in it but it was still good yeah and i don't hate mm -hmm. it because it's like slow i don't have anything against slow songs it's just when you have an album this good as, you know, Scream for Vengeance, Pain and Pleasure, I guess kind of just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb in a way, but... Well, maybe it'll make the next song sound good. <laughs> well, yeah, they will. Okay, all right. <laughs> so, Pain and Pleasure. Good song, but maybe not the strongest moment. Screaming for Freaking Vengeance. I love this song. It gets you right back into it and pumps you full of adrenaline. As Rick Flair would say, Woo! <laughs> Uh, I don't know if it was because we just came off of some slower tracks, but this song just gets you pumped up. Mm -hmm. I love the the speed of it. <laughs> uh, you can't help but just like want to get up and like jump around. I I loved it. The drums were excellent. The guitar solo exceptional, and the way his vocals went along with it. I just I love this song. Yeah, Rob definitely gives one of his best performances on this track, like, on the entire album. And the range of this guy just blows my mind. Like, I, I just couldn't imagine how you could sing like that all the time and still sound amazing all these years later. Um, and I know I've been putting a lot of attention on Rob. I mean, can you blame me? But 
I'll point out the great harmonic guitar solo that yes. you get on here. Like, that's just classic. Yeah, that you, was amazing. You can't beat that. Parts like that is where you can just imagine KK and Glenn side by side playing that. And anybody who's watched a Priest Live video knows exactly what I'm talking about. Just them playing side by side. Like, it's, a, it's a classic image. Um, now, putting the focus back on Rob, <laughs> when he's singing Screaming at the end, that's one of the most iconic moments in any Priest song to me. Gee, yeah, just being able to, to even to get that high, like, the way he was just like, not that he was, well, he was screaming it, but so in tune. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't even imagine trying to do that. I, I don't want to imagine you doing that either. <laughs> and then the lyrics, they're very, like, they're very uplifting too. Like, this, this is like a song you put on when you're like in the middle of a workout. Yeah. And you're like feeling like, man, I can't do anymore. And then this song comes up. It's like, no, I can do like 10 more reps or whatever. Exactly. So yeah. Um, yeah. The Scream of Vengeance is like what every title track should be. Just like with Razmanaz or Sabbath Bloody Sabbath, it stands out as, as being what the album is about. You know, it's just... An icon. Agree. Moving on to the song that you've definitely heard before. You've got another thing coming. Yes, I have heard you play this song around the house before. It's just one of those songs that you can't help get stuck in your head. It's, mm -hmm. it's a great song. It gives attitude. You've got another thing coming. Uh, it's just a, a fun song that you can really jam with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is one of the band's biggest hits. You've probably heard it on the radio before. I can, I can see why. And... To me, I, I really want to point out with the song is that this song has a good mix of something you could hear on the radio without being too commercial. Because a lot of bands, they tend to, what they tended to do around this time, especially in the 80s, is that, I don't know if like, if this would be the right word, but they would kind of sell out. Mm -hmm. Maybe for a song or two, just for some radio hits. But, I mean, I guess you could kind of argue that with a few of the albums that came out after this one, like Turbo or Ram It Down. But the point I'm trying to make is that even on great albums, you'll still get the occasional song that maybe just for the radio, but it's not what Priest did here. Because um, while it's a song you definitely could hear on the radio, they stuck to their guns and still made a song that sounds amazing and yeah. awesome. And didn't make it too commercial and, try to, and didn't try to like appeal to outside audience. Like, this is a song you could show to somebody who probably has no knowledge of Priest, and you, the, that person would be like, hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I agree, because I, like, you know, I don't typically listen to this, as I've mentioned in pre previous um, episodes, but this song could really suck you in. I, I do like it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, once again, this is like a, a classic song from Priest. Um, it's a staple of, like, live shows at this point, because it is just so, you know, famous from them. And... Yeah, not much else to talk about. You've got another thing coming. Great song, catchy, great riff, great solo, great vocals. Everything about Priest is here. Yep. I mean, everything great about Priest is here. <laughs> the second to last track, Fever. Another song I would call underrated. And I have a, quite a bit to say about this one, but I'll let you go first. Okay, I mean, I, I guess just coming off of You've Got Another Thing Coming, it was definitely a lot slower. It was still a good song. Uh, you know, great vocals again, and uh, a strong song, but just a lot, lot slower. I guess I don't have a whole lot to say other than it was a good song. All right. Uh, I guess the first thing I like to point out is that the guitar harmonies, or the harmonics, sorry, at the beginning, I think adds a nice bit of atmosphere. I think it, it's very different for this album because y y you don't really get harmonics on here. So I think that was a cool little thing. And then you get another great chorus, as always. Now, for me, the best part and the thing I love most about this song is the key change that happens about, like, middle way through it. Um, it's a nice change, and you get an amazing guitar solo harmony. Like, probably one of my favorite solos on the album. It's short, but it's still great. And then after that... You get probably some of, if not my favorite, Rob vocals on the entire album. Um, he sounds a lot more emotionally driven during this part, and it, it's fitting with the context of the song. If you couldn't tell, I really like this song. Um, it's very different from the rest of the songs on here because it goes for a more atmospheric kind yeah. of feel. You more don't, of a mood, I guess. Yeah, yeah but more of a mood. Like, that's a good way of putting it. And it's maybe not the best word to put it, but maybe a bit more theatrical. I don't okay. know. 
something more developed, I'd say, you know, more put into it as for like the, the feeling and the vibe of it. But yeah, I think Fever is a great song that just tends to go unnoticed, just like with, you know, Take These Chains, but I much prefer Fever over that one. And yeah, uh, let's move on to the last song of the album. The final song, Devil's Child. Yeah, The Devil's Child. I guess uh, for me, when you when I think of what a metal song would sound like, this would be it. You've got from, from the lyrics to the vocals, to uh, the musicianship. This is like a typical metal song. It was good. Yeah, I would say this song is pretty much a, like a culmination of everything that makes this album great. You get Rob's phenomenal vocals, you get the catchy chorus, you get you know a short but nice guitar solo, you get the key changes, the attitude, you get everything Yep. in this one song. It's all sandwiched together in this one song, and uh, it's Rolled great. Rolled up like a big burrito. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rob's vocals are like the beans, and <laughs> the guitar solo. It's like the meat. Yeah. Then the lettuce is something else. <laughs> uh, needless to say, I think it's an excellent send off to the album. It's a good rocking album. Yep, I well, hundred percent agree with you. So, our overall thoughts. What are yours? Well, with my first time listening to this whole album, what I've got to say that I really like about a group like. Uh, Judas Priest is they're not cookie cutter there's you know a lot of rock bands that are just groups in general that they seem to be like cookie cutter they're having the same sound and what I like is that they have a sound of their own there's like nobody like them Mm -hmm. so when you listening to his songs like you know like oh this is Judas Priest like I compared to anything else I've heard I don't think anybody has a sound like they have together yeah and yeah Judas Priest is like, I would say one of the three, like, real icons of the heavy metal genre. Because you have Priest, and then you got Iron Maiden, and then in the middle you kind of have Saxon, although um, they're maybe not as well acknowledged as the other two, but still are just as important. But yeah, um, as for the album, like, you, you just liked it Yeah, well. thumbs up. I mean, you said this was from the 80s, right? 82. Okay, because, like... I think that during that time, there was, like, a lot of those hair band groups. Mm-hmm. And, like I said, like, they were all kind of, like, cookie-cutter sounding. You, they kind of had the same type of sound to it where this was different. That's what I liked about it. Like your, it. your, your Motley Crue. Yeah, your, your Poison. poison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the Priest definitely is a million times better than those bands. Yeah, I, I will say that right now. But um, <laughs> Scream for Vengeance, I think it deserves the praise it gets. It should be regarded as one of the best albums in heavy metal, which it is. Yeah, it's got some of the most classic pre-songs on it. Like, you've got another thing coming, Electric Eye, Devil's Child, and even some little hidden gems that people don't tend to talk about all that much, like Fever and Take These Chains. And even the weakest song on the album, Pain and Pleasure, it's still awesome. It's still a great song. So yeah. there's really no like really weak moment on here. No, that's that, not a bad song at all, in my opinion. And I will say, you know, talking about how a lot of the bands maybe during the '80s were kind of cookie cutter, as you put it. Mm-hmm. Around like '86, Priest did try to kind of hop on the bandwagon and make a bit more commercial music, and uh, people are kind of mixed about that kind of era of the band. I don't personally dislike. The two albums that people kind of point out as being their commercial albums, but it, it kind of goes to show that even if you have a band like Priest that sticks to their guns and makes just an amazing album that does not sell out, you will you'll still occasionally get the you know the example of these bands kind of selling out. Like you know, Priest did it. Obviously, the biggest example I could say is like Metallica. Mm. It's like the the biggest example I think anybody could point out, but. Yeah, so your favorite song on the album? Ooh, my favorite song, I would have to say, was Screaming for Vengeance. Good choice. Yes. And mine would be Riding on the Wind. Like, just everything about the song just works extremely well. And as for your least favorite? Um, I don't think I really had a least favorite, but I guess if I had to pick one, I would go with uh, Pain and Pleasure. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But like I've mentioned multiple times already not a bad song really good actually but um yeah that's uh, screaming for vengeance and that ends episode five of our little podcast thing so All right. 
if you want to see more episodes like this, stick around because we'll be making more of these in the future. Thank you, everybody, for listening and or watching, and we'll see you next time. Farewell.